in the Bible, Bible uses different words to describe man's disobedience toward God. One of the words that we all know and it's used only in the religious setting in our culture is the word sin. Word sin means to miss the mark. It was in, in the Greek it was the same thing as if you were going to a, a, pl a flight and you missed a flight. You would use that instead of saying I missed a flight you would say I, I sinned a flight. So it was not a religious word. It was simply meant you tried but failed. You tried but you didn't try hard enough and you didn't reach it. Another word for disobedience to God in the Bible is iniquity. Now word iniquity is a little bit different than the word sin because word iniquity carries a idea of being twisted, crooked, perverted, perverse, and bent. Bent means when you have a certain bent. Not just an act, but it's a repeated act. It's your habit. It's now your addiction. It's now your, it's your way of doing things. It's the way Smiths do it. It's the way Robinsons do it. Well, it's the way we do it. It's the way we Russians do it. It's, it's the Mexican thing or it's a Russian thing or, a, or it's American thing or it, now it's become our band. It's no longer just your personal but now it becomes a family band where everybody has a band on that. Now it's pretty normal. We see that in the scripture where our father Abraham was a mighty man of God of faith but he had a band toward lying. It was not a big band but it was a band. He almost jeopardized his promise. We see his son rising up and his son has exactly the same bent to the same degree. Even the stories repeated themselves. They lied not about their cattle and their house and the promise. They lied about their women. He lied about the woman. His son lies about the woman. And then we see his third son, grandson Jacob. He has a similar bent toward lying. He lies to his dad about his brother. You think it stops there? Jacob's children lied to their own dad Jacob about their son and their brother Joseph saying he's dead when he's not. We see four generations who are mighty men of God who have a bent toward lying. And so this is not just one person who has somehow you know the demon attacked him but this is already a generational and when a person dies the demon jumps on the other person and when the person dies jumps on the other person and keeps jumping and jumping and jumping and somebody until somebody gets sick and tired and says you know get off of my back and Joseph did that. Joseph had many situations to lie, cheat and do many things and Joseph says you know what I know this looks so easy and I know this is the time for this demon to pass on to me but he says you know what that's not gonna be like that and this stopped and we don't see bent on lying in Joseph's kids. We don't see bent on lying after that because somebody rose up and says you know what this has to stop and I can be the one who will stop that. We see yes let's put our hands together for Jesus. We see in Exodus that God says he will visit the iniquity of the fathers to the children, grandchildren up to fourth generations. We see in Lamentations where it says that our fathers have sinned but we bear the iniquity of our fathers. We see in Psalms David says that in iniquity I was conceived. We see in Deuteronomy where God presents a plan to Israel. He says, I offer to you blessing and cursing. He says, choose life, choose blessing so that you and your children will live. What God was saying is whichever way you're going to go, your kids will most likely be bent in exactly the same way. But with the amazing verse in Isaiah 53, it says, Jesus was bruised for our transgressions, but he was wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions but bruised for our iniquities. Jesus did not only die to deliver me from the penalty of sin. Jesus died to deliver me from the power of sin. Jesus died to deliver me the inner bruise. So the things that are bent in my family, the things that go through blood, through genes. Jesus says, I have a better blood, my blood. And if you come under it, you can be free and you can be straight because you are under better blood. And the blood that's been passed on from our forefathers. Can somebody say amen? You can be free because of his blood. You know, actually, I've heard a study where scientists did a study upon people who grow up in particular homes and environments and they found out that when kids grow up in a family where parents are alcoholics they're not just using you know once in a while they drink but they're they abuse alcohol 
they found out that that child who grows up in that home is 10 times more likely to abuse alcohol in their life because they grow up like that and they found out that these these tendencies, proclivities, they actually travel in your genes. This is not just something well, a learned behavior that you observe in the house, you see them drink, you see like, well, that's the way of life. This is not just that, but it's also in your genes. But another thing that I heard in a study that they found out is not only that they are in your genes, but when you are born, that these genes can be activated or remain dormant. Certain genes you cannot deactivate like the color of your eyes, the color of your hair and so many other genes. They are simply will be activated no matter how much you want to change it unless you're Michael Jackson you can afford the surgery. But otherwise you cannot deactivate them. But there is genes like laziness where everybody has diabetes or everybody doesn't care about their weight or everybody constantly cuts corners or everybody doesn't want to go to school. Everybody doesn't want to stay with their husband in life and make the marriage work. These genes can lay dormant and they can be deactivated. Just like with an iPhone. If you buy a new iPhone from the store, the new phone comes to you unactivated. Only after you activate it that it works. I want to tell you something today. You are not responsible for what gets passed on to you, but you are responsible for what you activate. If your parents have grew up and done something, maybe grandparents, maybe nobody in the family has done right and there is this bend and you say, I feel this bend in my life. I want to encourage you today. You are not responsible for what passed on to you, but you are responsible for what you choose to activate in your life. You can put that gene back to sleep and say, you know what, you have to go back where you came from. And you can activate a new gene in your life, the gene of God, the gene of the fruit of the Spirit, the gene of the promises of God, and be who God wants you to be. Can somebody say amen? Let's put our hands together for Jesus.